So here's Elizabeth Warren being asked. Now, this is after she came out with her big um, anti-corruption plan. She has a plan for that. And, and so they ask her, is it, if you're president, would your vice president's kid be able to sit on a board? So, uh, so they asked her, and here's what she said. Would your vice president's child be allowed to serve on a board of a foreign company? No. Why I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I have to just go back and look at the details. Do you think plan. that could be a problem? I, 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 so when she does this, that's her tell. I, I have to go back and look. I, 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 I think that's the DNC earpiece. I think that's ah. like, like, you said the truth, stop that right now. You can't switch your answer. Tell them you don't know. <laughs> I have to go back and look where? For where the fuck your ethics are? Is that what you have to go back and look for? <laughs> well, how is that a problem? Like, would you, would you cheat on your spouse? No, I mean, well, I mean, I got to figure that out. I mean, if I walk by a brothel and I mean, they're free. I mean, I'm not going to, like, I have to go look at, I have to go back and look at our marriage license. I don't yeah, know yeah, if I, I have to, I, I got to check the clarification on that. Cause like if I trip and fall and a girl's blowing me, what am I going to just say? No, I mean, let's, let's not be crazy. I have gonna, to get back to fall. the airport as a wind sock to bring small aircraft in. <laughs> so... You know what, I just want to say that, um, I, I don't, can you point to that guy right there? That's Ron Placone with hair. No. Before a haircut, before a haircut, before a haircut. I mean, be Ron was right there covering it for the Jimmy Dore show. Back to you, Jim. I want to know why this guy's wearing a fake beard in the back, because yeah. that ain't a real beard. <laughs> you know how I That's feel about editor. beards. Uh -oh. Don't get me started. Uh -oh. <laughs> Boy, he's really looking at her like... I wonder what she would taste like with barbecue sauce. On. <laughs> so she's going to lose to Trump if she's the nominee because Trump can bait her into doing the craziest stuff like this. She had to say this. I am not a person of color. I am not a citizen of a tribe. You know what, Jimmy? Her DNA doesn't even agree with her. I know. <laughs> Here she was being asked. So she really did push that she was uh, part Native American. Like, it was a big deal for her. And they, she was asked, well, what are you going to do for the Native Americans? This is when she was running for Senate. My question to you is, if you are elected, uh, you would be Massachusetts' first female senator. I would be. Would you be? Ma now, she's master at not answering a question directly. Now, most politicians do this, and if you're a really good politician, you can do it without making people notice that you're not answering their question. And in fact, they feel good about what you said. That's Barack Obama. Now, she doesn't, you see it right away. She has, watch, here you sit. Massachusetts' first Native American senator. I would be their first senator, so far as I know, who has Native American heritage. Would you do anything for Native American issues when in office? Oh, listen, I'm working on what happens to America's families. That's what I've been working on for 25 years. And so she didn't say yes. I don't know if you noticed. Are you going to do anything to help Native Americans? Oh, yeah, I've been working. She didn't answer the question, and she pivoted to, I'm working for all families. I'm not a professional politician. But this is exactly what pulled me into this race. Would you work for any Native American issues? I believe that what's happening to America's families includes all families. All the people out there who work hard, who play by the rules, and who realize they're just getting slammed. The cost of an education is going up. So that's it. So she just says, oh, I'm going to work for all. Yes, I'm going to work for all families. And this guy says, she just all lives mattered, indigenous families, after claiming the heritage. That's what she did. Are you going to help Native Americans? I'm going to work for all families. That's exactly it. So, hey, are you going to help black lives matter? I'm going to have all lives matter. That's exactly what she did. And the way she said, listen, make me think she was going to at least acknowledge their specific oppression, but nah. No, she didn't. <laughs> so that's, I mean, so that shit is out there. There's, kind, there's stuff like this all over. I didn't have to look that hard to find stuff like this. And of course, the disqualifier for me was when she stood up and applauded for Donald Trump at the State of the Union when he said, we're not a socialist country. And she stood up and applauded for that fucking guy. You know, can you imagine in the history of your life you would stand up and applaud for Donald Trump? And guess who didn't stand up? I don't know if you know this. Also, 
also Tim Kaine next to her. Big old smile on his face. Man, I love capitalism. <laughs> but, it, but in fairness to him, he is clapping in Spanish, so. <laughs> 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 you know, I keep I keep waiting for a video that's going to be released that uh, you know Elizabeth uh, Warren admits that she was like a pregnant Native American progressive who got fired from her job. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and I love how she said like, and we got to get these. We can't have these lobbyists affect politicians. You mean like your daughter giving forty five thousand dollars to the working people to endorse your fucking mom? Is that oh. what you're talking about? That lobby oh, group? Oh, Graham, the people don't know about this fact. Mm. Do you guys know about the fact he's talking about? <laughs> Graham, tell tell him. So uh, her daughter, who does a lot of lobbying for uh, Fi- is it Fi- no, Pfizer, one of the big healthcare industries or something like that, uh, they gave. You tell me. You have all the facts. <laughs> <laughs> Her daughter uh, gave $45,000 to the... The Working Families Party. Working Families Party. And that's weird. Then all of a sudden they endorsed her over Bernie Sanders. Isn't that weird? How that... How lobbying works when your daughter... Like I don't know Hunter Biden, you know what I mean? That's how that's how they did it. That's how the what's everyone was so shocked. Remember when we all went, why is it working families endorsing fucking Liz Warren? That's why forty five thousand dollars bought the endorsement. I have, I have no opinion about that. <laughs> hold on, Chuck Todd will say that's a crazy conspiracy theory. Yes, that's what they that's what they do now. So if they don't, if there's a fact that they don't like, like hey Hunter Biden had a job on an energy board in Ukraine, and they go that's a crazy conspiracy theory. It's like no, that's not a that's a fucking fact that that happened. And Elizabeth Warren's daughter did donate the forty five grand to the world. These are all things that actually happen. These aren't conspiracy theories. Yeah, so that's Chuck a conspiracy Todd. theory. But like Rachel Maddow going, somebody knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who <laughs> ate borscht. Ah, yeah. oh, fucking Russia, Russia. Russia. <laughs> yeah, Chuck Todd also isn't convinced that climate change is real. So that's, that's right. Uh, that's where he's at. That's People don't know that about Chuck Todd, but yeah, we do because we actually have to watch that piece of shit. <laughs> Hi. <right. laughs> so here is... Uh, so here's the problem with Elizabeth Warren. It all started when she... Well, the big problem started when she signaled she was going to take big money and dark money in the general. And here she says uh, it. You don't believe in unilateral disarmament. So does this only apply in the primaries? Or will you carry this over to the general election or any other election you'll have going forward? So this is for primaries. Look, I do not believe in unilateral disarmament. We need to win. Okay, all right. You know, like last time. Remember how last time we won because we spent twice as much money as Donald Trump did? Oh, wait, we fucking lost last time. And we spent twice as much money as Donald Trump did. I guess that's not how it works. I guess we should try something else. Nope, same shit. Try the same shit. This is her whole... This is the way she operates. She is, she is such an amazing progressive Trojan horse because this she talks the progressive game. Remember when she wagged her finger at the Wells Fargo guy and everyone went, yeah, the guy walked out with a $124 million severance plan. I will wear a goddamn Speedo and a tutu and you can fucking kick my ass with a boot for $124 million goddamn dollars. <laughs> she was, she was going to resist Trump. We just saw her standing. She gave $80 billion to his war machine in October of 2017. She is so such skilled at being a fake progressive, and she knows because of identity politics, no one's going to make fun of her age because they'll be called ageist and sexist. But you can do that about Bernie Sanders. Yeah, wow, that sound. That's, you sound you were borderline sexist. <laughs> <laughs> Borderline sexist. So watch this. So now she took a lot of heat from... By the way, so there's this guy, Adam Green, who runs the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. You've seen him on TV. He goes on the talk shows a lot. And so I bumped into him at the, at the debates in Miami, and I, I asked him about this. I go, hey, what's with Elizabeth Warren? Because he walks around, he has a lapel on his... a uh, pin on his lapel that says Warren Wing, meaning he's representing... And they've endorsed her. And I said, hey, what's with Elizabeth Warren taking the dark money in the general? And he goes, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like, are you in fucking sixth grade? Are you really doing this? He goes, what, what do you, t- I don't know what you mean. I go, you know the interview she did with Jenk where she says she's gonna take the money. I didn't see it. I'm like, this, that's your, I go, that's your answer? You're gonna fucking pretend she didn't say it? And he goes, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> and I go, can you come on my show? <laughs> <laughs> and he won't come on my show. And so I, I send him dig DMs on Twitter and I just say boo all the time. <laughs> I do. And, 
Uh, and then he's, and then I said to him, I go, this is, he goes, it's dumb to say something about, and I said, it's dumb to think that dumb guys like me don't see right through fucking guys like you. That's what I told him. Because it pisses me off that guys who are smarter than me try to bullshit me right to my face. When someone does that to me, I don't know, I just want to swear at them, you know? And he's, I'm like, you're just going to swear at me? Anyway, so here's what she did. She goes, in a shift... Elizabeth Warren now says she will not do big money fundraising events if she's the Democratic nominee. She had previously said her ban only applied to the primary. I was like, oh my, now? So she's finally going to admit that she was going to take it, and now she's going to say she wasn't going to take it. So now, and then I said, hey, guess what? New shift, Elizabeth Warren now says she will do big money fundraising events now that she's the nominee and Sanders has endorsed her, and that's what's coming in July 30th of 2020, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you think, are you afraid that that will happen if she gets the nomination she'll go you know what i wasn't going to take the big money but son of a gun we can't you know we gotta win this is too important this is too important we gotta win so elizabeth warren's campaign clarifies she will raise big dollar money for the party as the nominee she just fucking flip-flopped again so here's how it goes i'm gonna keep doing what i'm doing um and that is funding my campaign in the primary and in the general through small dollar donations I think this is critically important to building a grassroots movement and to rebuilding our democracy. At the same time, I'm not asking our state parties or our national party to unilaterally disarm. I'm going to help them raise money in 2018. So I she's going to help the parties raise money. And then she goes on to say all the money she raised for the party. So then, I don't know if you know, but this is what Graham was alluding to. My buddy gave me a heads up. He says, Jimmy, she's going to use the state Democratic Party's loophole. This is her signal. You need to do a story on this. By doing this, donors are able to donate more than the $2,700 limit. It's Hillary all over again. And if you remember, Clinton fundraising leaves little for state parties. The subheadline is the Democratic frontrunner says she's raising big checks to help, to help state parties committees, but they've gotten to keep only 1% of the $60 million. That's another scandal that never gets talked about in the Hillary Clinton campaign of 2016. So the, the, remember the Hillary Victory Fund is a so-called joint fundraising committee comprised of Clinton's presidential campaign, the Democratic National Committee, and 32 state party committees. The setup allows Clinton to solicit checks of $350,000 or more from her super rich supporters. And if that's what that George Clooney fundraiser was with 350, I thought I kept misreading it, $350,000 a plate. So she went and did those dinners instead of going to Milwaukee or was uh, or any place in Michigan that's what she was doing and then she would go to Texas and Arizona and campaign down there and so now Elizabeth Warren is signaling she's going to do the same goddamn thing because they always have a joint fundraising committee it'll be the Hillary you know the victory fund for Elizabeth Warren and the Democratic Party and they're going to do that and that's what she's saying I'm going to raise the money from the same fucking people I'm saying I'm not so that's her her sneak out of this and that's shitty. I, I think that's shitty. I'll throw it over to my panel. Well, I mean, the other, she, she's so good at giving the little signals, right? She says, we need to green up the military. That's telling the war machine, don't worry, kids. Business as usual. Might put some veggie oil into a Humvee or two, but <laughs> the fucking war machine is going to crank forward. Yep. That's all she's doing. And all the other thing, and this is such a great loophole. That's all, I'm not taking any super PAC money. This is another way they won't take super PAC money. So that's how, like, Steve Mnuchin just gave a check out of his own personal account to support Kamala Harris. See, he just, he's just an individual citizen. Like, there's no fucking strings attached. Like, we're goddamn morons. Everything she says is a little like, like, Medicare for all. I mean, we need to have other private options. She's telling the private insurance industry, don't worry, I got your back. So when I become the nominee, I will take care of all of you, and then you'll watch me get crushed by Trump. Yeah. We called those smoke signals. <laughs> So Elizabeth Warren actually then even clear so they sent out a statement to clarify what her position is. You want to see it? There it is. I don't fucking I don't have time. I don't have time. 
Do you have time? Because I don't have time. Oh. When Elizabeth the devil died for love, okay, yeah, fuck, all right. <laughs> Believe me, it's gonna be changed tomorrow and be clarified next week, and then we'll see you at the debate. But this guy, this guy, Rufus Gifford, right? Which, uh, that, that is quite a name. That is quite a name. Rufus Gifford, he worked for Obama for 10 years. And when he, she said that she wasn't gonna take any big money, he tweeted this out. Oh, the Democratic Party just went bankrupt. This is a colossally stupid decision, not just for Democratic chances to win back the White House, but for all Democrats up and down a ticket if she sticks to it. So she, he's saying, God, you gotta be corrupt. If you don't get in bed with the people who are screwing over the people you wanna vote for you, you're doing it wrong. He goes, and then people got mad at him and let him know on Twitter. He goes, well, it seems I've touched a nerve. <laughs> Two things. I would welcome Warren as our nominee and work like hell to elect her. I don't welcome political decisions that make that harder. And number two, it's hilariously stupid that Obama-era establishment figure is now a pejorative on the left. You know what I think is stupid, Rufus? I think it's stupid that Barack Obama developed a banking plan that kicked 5.1 million fucking families out of their house at the same time he was giving trillion dollars to Wall Street to make them whole. I think that's fucking ridiculous. And that's why you guys are now a pejorative. I think it's ridiculous that when you had a super majority, a fucking super majority in the House and Senate, and you had the White House, you instituted a right-wing healthcare plan fucking anyway. I think that's ridiculous because you just left 30 million people out of your universal healthcare plan. So go fuck yourself, Rufus. Well, Jimmy, it appears I touched a nerve. <laughs> By the way, what are you doing touching my fucking nerves? <laughs> Get off my actual nerves, Mengele. <laughs> and? Yeah. Our next live Jimmy Dore show is November 5th in Buffalo, New York, November 17th in Philadelphia, and December 27th in Honolulu. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a link for all of our live shows and become a patron or a Jimmy Dore show member at jimmydorecomedy.com slash join and uh, support the show. We give you hours of bonus content every week. Thanks for your support.